finish up the happy little accident sale and then we had the lost and found sale and then the nirvana plush sale <laughs> Welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave again today. And we have had, for early January, we've had some pretty good sales. I'm pretty happy with them. Matter of fact, I just saw a sale come across and I was surprised. I'm like, what in the world sold for that much? And I was really happy about that. We're going to show that on tomorrow's because I've already got this one set up and I'm going to ship this one out tomorrow. And I had a sale about 20 minutes ago that I'm going to ship out tomorrow as well. And that was a really good sale. So I'm happy about those two. I'll keep you in a little suspense for tomorrow. So we'll let you look at those tomorrow. But I did have some interesting items sell today and some decent profits on them. Not amazing, but pretty decent profits on them. Pretty happy with them. I hit the trifecta today. We're tracking three sales right now. Uh, we used to track two, and I think one's fallen by the wayside. We're going to track, uh, finish up the happy little accident sale over the over the next weeks. Uh, it's hard for me to, to, to cut that off because I know there's still a few things up there, but that one's coming to an end. Most of that stuff has sold off, even in the antique booths. We're going to take one look at that today because one item sold out of that sale. And then we had the lost and found sale that we're just ramping up here as I list items slowly. And we'll take a look at that one. That one we haven't broke even on yet, but we're getting close. And tomorrow we'll get a little closer. And then the Nirvana plush sale, which we still have a long way to go. But we had a massive item sale. And it was a private sale. It was not done on eBay. It was somebody who saw the video on Commonwealth Flipper and contacted me through my, I think it was through email to begin with. And then we uh, started to exchange information and we made a big sale on the whole lot. So we're going to let you take a look at that today. And so those are three sales from the three sales we're tracking and we'll We'll let you take a look and then update you on those. All right, and I had, uh, when I went to the post office the other day, I checked the box and somebody sent us something. So Bluegrass Picker, I think this video is jam-packed, so we're going to open that box tomorrow. I'm, I'm excited to see what's in that box, so we'll, we'll take a look at that one tomorrow, and I appreciate that. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what's sold today. All right, we haven't sold one of these in a long time. This is uh, Little People. Now, this one's not even wood, so this is the plastic bottom. Whenever I see lots of this stuff, or if I see a box full of this stuff, I'll usually pick it up if the price is right. You can sell them off piece by piece and make some pretty good money. There's a little bolo for you. If you've been watching this show for a long time, you've heard me talk about it because I found a box. I think I paid 10 bucks for the whole box. Well, I sold one item out of there and made like $15 profit, and I've been selling off that box. That was before I started doing the show. I would have tracked that box because I bet we've made $600 out of that little box of little people. Uh, we were fortunate, though, that we found the dragon. And when I saw that dragon, I knew there'd be some castle pieces and some, some little thrones and the king and the queen and the little kids and all the stuff that goes with it. And those are some big sellers. So a lot of the wooden ones, you can sell them off one at a time if you want. But I usually lot some of them together and sell some off. I had multiples of these. I think I had three or four of these. So I listed them 688 free shipping so it's like almost three dollars every time i sell one i think we had three so i figured it was worth one listing so 688 and i put mom school teacher glasses blonde in the title and vintage so i don't know <laughs> she looks like a school teacher to me all right this is a personal item matter of fact my brother gave me this as a gift an apple tv years and years ago and it we lost the remote for it and then we found it, and then we lost it, and then we found it, and Turner loses it all the time. And I'm like, you know what? We have Roku on all our other TVs, so I'm going to get a Roku. Plus, the, it's easier for them to navigate and watch stuff. So, And I know he wants to watch Commonwealth Picker, so <laughs> not true. This sold for $34.81. little Apple TV. I think it's third generation is what we got. So uh, it didn't have a remote. So if it had a remote, we'd get a little bit more. But I'm happy with 35 bucks for it. The money we made off of this definitely paid for that Roku plus some. All right, here is the item from the Lost and Found, the golf course pick. And that's on Commonwealth Flipper if you want to check check it out. 
Scottsdale TR. That's a type of, it's Scottsdale, Arizona, but it's a type of putter. And this one sold for $9.41. So you figure fees around $1.50, shipping around, well, we'll call it $2.50, even though it's a little bit more. And so there's $4, throw an extra $0.41 cents at fees and shipping. And it's a $5 profit from a zero sum. And that's what we're working off of to pay off this massive buy. So let's take a look at where we're at on this one. All right, I bought four golf bags and a ton of golf club head covers. And we've sold three of them off already. One bag for $109, a Primlin cover for a $9 profit, and this pink Scottsdale cover for a $5 profit. So out of the $250, we've made $123 back. So we're halfway to making our money back. Hey, I just noticed we think Reagan made that with one of her gifts. I think it's pretty neat. I love these little keyboards. This one's in pretty good shape. I always, before I buy it, well, not always, if it's cheap enough, it's like a buck, I'll just pick it up. But if they want like four or five dollars for it, I'll check and make sure that there's no corrosion in there before I buy it. Because if there's corrosion, it's a little bit of work. If it's a great one, I buy it with corrosion. This one, look up, always look up the numbers. Some of them are good and some of them aren't good. This one happened to be a pretty good one. I paid a dollar for it. It sold for $26.81 and it was in the eBay store for probably four months. It had been there a while. But it sold $26.81, about a $22 profit. Right here is a Mary Kay Cream to Powder Ivory. And we're running low on these, which is a good and bad thing. I'm happy to sell them, but man, they sell good. We're into it for maybe 20 cents or so. And it sold for $15.41 free shipping. All right, here is the Happy Little Accident sale. There are four of these, two right here, obviously. And I'll show you the other two in a second. But they're old world ornaments and they came from the Happy Little Accident. And I will do my best to not drop them. And here are the other two. And took a while to sell them. But they sold for $24.81. So it's probably around a $17 profit. And we'll add that to the total for the Happy Little Accident. And if you're new to the channel, go back and type in... Uh, I always forget to put the links. Ha type in Commonwealth Picker Happy Little Accident. Go to the oldest one and you'll see everything we bought there. And we guessed that we would make between $2,000 and $2,500 on that sale. And we have made a $250 original invest, or excuse me, $200 original investment. So far, we're up to $2,226. And so our profit on that is $2,026 so far. And we're still counting. So we added that one on there. And we also added the booth sales for November. And I know it's the end of December, but it took us a while to get through those booth sales. So... That's pretty good. I think we're going to probably get to 2,500 almost on the button is about how much we have left if everything sells. And that reminds me of something, you know, it's January. So you got to look out in the future. You got to think of St. Patrick's Day. You got to think of Valentine's Day. All that stuff is coming. And so it reminded me that I had these keys, these keys that I bought at a yard sale quite a while ago, actually. I think I paid up for them. I think I paid 15 bucks. I sold one in the booth for $3, just one key. So I'm like, eh, it's definitely going to be worth it. I think I paid 15 I hope I didn't pay more than that, but I might have, and it'd still be worth it, I think. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. If I'm going to put some of these in the booth, if I'm going to put them all together as a lot and sell them, if I'm going to break them into like three or four lots, I don't know what I'm going to do. But what I definitely am going to do is I like to take these keys that are shaped like hearts. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can see that. Now, some of them have different shapes. I pulled the heart ones off that at least somewhat resemble a heart. Let me show you some other ones. See, that one doesn't really resemble a heart. And a lot of them look just like that. Actually, most of them look just like that. Some of them are a little bit different, but pretty much the same idea. So I took the ones that look like hearts, and people will list these as key to my heart, Valentine's gift, or something like that. Now, some of them have a little rust. i got to clean them up. But you can sell one-off keys here for like anywhere between $10 and $25 for these old skeleton keys. And I don't know what the market will be this year, but I have four of them, and that's why I bought it. I bought it because I knew I could sell these off at Valentine's Day, and they've been sitting here ever since. So I'm going to do that, and maybe you'll see those sell over the coming months. All right, here is Assassin's Creed Xbox One, and I've talked about this a little bit. I bought a whole box of this stuff. And there was a few good titles, but that was it. Most of them were bad titles. And I bought them anyways because I wanted to see if I could sell them in the booth and see if they were worth it because I pass up so many bad titles out there 
because you just can't get much for them and it's not worth the time to lot them up on eBay. So I wanted to try it and I saw a few good titles that would make my money back at least and I could just sell those in my booth for $1, $2, $3 and see if it's worth it. So, so far it's worked. I've sold four or five games in the booth already and both of the titles that were pretty good sold on eBay. Reminds me of one other thing. I have been, this is obviously, it was a dollar, the Sony. And it's pretty cool. I haven't looked it up. My guess is it goes for 10 to $20 plus shipping on eBay. And it's probably long tail. I haven't even looked it up. But this is the kind of thing that I've started to look at. Because I want to have, in my antique booth, I want to have like a vintage electronics area. And this is the kind of thing that I think I could sell for 10 to $15. And I see them all the time. So I don't know. I'll have to look up the specs and the model number. See if this one sells on eBay. But... That's one thing that I've been trying to do is find some unique things that sell in this antique booth that nobody else is selling so that my booth is, is different than everybody else's. So I think this would sell. You get the right people in there, they would want to buy a, an old Sony cassette player like this. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if it went for 15 bucks. So we'll give it a shot and experiment with it. What do you all think? You think it'll work? All right, I want you to hang around here. I think I'm going to do two things. I think I'm going to ship this, and I'll let you uh, take a look at how I ship this. It's nothing special, but if you are a newbie to eBay, I'll show you how to Frankenbox a couple of priority mail boxes and get this thing in it just fine. It's really not hard. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even be too scared to buy the big ones. You find the right boxes, you can ship the big keyboards too, and there's a lot of money to be made in some of those keyboards. Some are definitely not worth it, so you got to make sure you look up those model numbers. But I'll let you take a look from up there and show you how I ship these, and then you can comment if you ship them differently. Second thing I'm going to do is let you take a look here at the My Little Ponies. And I've got a couple of short little like 30, 40 second snips of the My Little Ponies, and we'll talk about how much they sold for and how much money we've made. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you right now. So the sale went through, and it was a private sale, so there's no fees on eBay. Uh, we just, I, I sent an invoice through PayPal, and they had communicated after watching the My Little Pony video on Commonwealth Flipper. They had picked out some, and they had taken screenshots of the video, and said, hey, pull these out. And so I told Reagan, I said, hey, Reagan, you want to make a little money? And I let her look at the screenshots, and she started pulling them all out. And she found almost all of them, I think. And then we started communicating, and I'm like, you know what, how much for all of them? That way I don't have to clean and list and, and do all the one-offs. I probably could have made about seven to $800. There's a couple in there that are really worth some money, um, 40 to 50 bucks. But most of them were going to be like $3 at a time. I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that. I have so much to list. So this person was a collector. And I'm like, you know what? She's a viewer. She's a collector. I'm going to make her a great deal on these. So we came to, I think it was $400, and I paid $21 of the shipping, and she covered the rest and because it is a big, it's 24 pounds, so it's a big box, and it's pretty heavy. So I covered a little bit of the shipping, and she covered a little bit of the shipping. And so the profit here is $379, and we're going to add that to the total. If you go back and watch that video, the plush Nirvana one, I think it's like 1980s vintage yard sale or something. It had a My Monster thumbnail on it, if you remember that one. That tub, I think we ended up paying 50 bucks for the whole tub. And to make a profit like this off of that $50 tub is, is pretty good. So $156 for the whole yard sale we bought that day, and we're up to $980. Bucks. So stick around and watch that, and you'll have a wonderful day. And I hope your new year has started off well, and I hope your sales are still going. See you next time. All right, so it looks like we are going to make a big deal. So we are going to do all of these ponies. For 350 bucks plus shipping. And there are some really good ones in here. Um, best of my ability, with limited research, there are some that probably could go for 50 bucks. Um, but most of them are three, four dollar ponies. But there are some good ones for sure. So this is going to a collector, and this is going to be a nice, like these right here with the seahorses or the mermaids, I guess they are. There are some of those that have some value. There's a couple I found that are, you know, I don't know, maybe 30 bucks or so. And uh, so if you take like the very best, there's probably a couple hundred dollars worth of just a handful of them. And we're going to ship them all off. So 
Um, I could make more, obviously going one-offs, but the time involved would really put me behind the eight ball for a lot of stuff that I gotta sell. And it's going to a collector, it's going to a viewer, and so I'm happy to make that deal, and it's going to a good home. There are some condition issues on some of them, but I know there are some, some ones that are worth some money. So I'm happy they're going where they're going.